Thor. 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 What a classic Thor adventure. <laughs> this is 10 years for me. I'd have loved every time I played the character. This new film transitions us from Endgame into a rebirth. Thor doesn't know what his place is in the universe. <laughs> That's represented in his wardrobe as well. Oh. Hi. Jay? I was really excited to come back as the mighty Thor and get to share the mantle. To have both of us in the same cape. <laughs> um, that was amazing and incredible, especially with Taika at the helm. Taika, he's like a big kid. He's like a sort of a genius child. I wasn't afraid to be flamboyant and a bit camp. Hi. Woo! Three, two, one, scream! <laughs> Giant goats! Look at those! They are wonderful! Yes, they are. They also scream quite a lot. It's hugely imaginative and fun. It's such an enormous scale. <laughs> It's a crazy space adventure with a new villain who's pretty monstrous. Oh, God, she will die. <laughs> we really raised the bar with Ragnarok. Love and Thunder is even more unique and different, so it's pretty exciting. Marvel Studios' Thor Love and Thunder has epic visuals and incredible action, which is why I'm speaking with VFX supervisor Jake Morrison to break it all down. Hey, nice to see you, Jake. Hi there. Lovely to see you. Great to have a chat about the film. Yeah, let's do it. So there are so many incredible visuals in the film, but I think we should fast forward to one of my favorite moments, which is the Gates of Eternity with some of the most adorable warriors yet in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and some of the most incredible visuals. When you first went to approach that scene, where did you start? Sometimes you start with um, storyboards and then you move into to the previs stuff and you go to the little cartoon people. This one, we just jumped straight into the previs. So we, we knew what we wanted. I talked to Taika extensively about the, the vibe that he wanted. We kind of already had a structure that, that we knew was going to be in there with like, like two and a half minutes. Creative boundaries are actually very good because it focuses you to come up with something unusual in there. Sometimes a blank slate is actually not helpful because it could be anything. But when you know you've got to come up with a fight beat with the kids in two and a half minutes to this song, it actually pushes you uh, creatively to do something that's very focused. So once you have all of those parameters set, what was it like getting to capture everything on set, especially with all of those adorable kiddos? Taika creates such a family atmosphere on set, but this was like a literal family atmosphere. Like we had everybody's kids there. Uh, Christian's kids in it, Natalie's kids, Chris's kids, Taika's kids, like everybody's in there. They're not fighting against monsters, of course. Uh, they're fighting against, you know, stunt guys in gray suits with the dots on that you see all the time. And the kids all did great. So they learned their moves. We didn't, you know, they weren't swinging off trampolines. Although Chris's kid, one of Chris's kids uh, did do what they call a double gainer in wire work, which is a double backflip in midair. So uh, there's, a, there's a chip off the block. It's so fun and just really wildly creative and inventive and not just in the scene, but in the visual effects. How after all of these years do you keep really raising the bar? So when you're working with a director like Taika who doesn't want you to be in a safe spot, who actually wants you to go out there and kind of like jump off the cliff and kind of like stitch the parachute on the way down. Uh, it's exhilarating and it's terrifying, uh, but it's also super rewarding as the whole thing comes together. The challenge in visual effects nowadays is that the audience are extremely wise. We all see so many cool things all the time, but often that they're, they're using the same building blocks. Effectively, you're seeing stuff put together in the same way that, they all, that it has been for the last 20 years. The pictures get better, the pictures get more complex, the, the, the scope and the scale gets bigger but fundamentally trying to change how you do it to come up with satisfying a vision of an incredibly creatively hungry director like Taika Waititi, it is a challenge in itself. And so he's pushing us to look for the new technologies that we can bring in to allow us for more creative opportunities. Any of the sequences across the picture couldn't have existed if we hadn't taken some huge creative leaps and just kind of, I'm sure it's gonna work. And, and, and it did, I'm sure it was gonna work, I was certain. Yeah, it worked. Okay, thank God. Oh, I'm sure it was a huge relief. But, you know, in order to make things look so new and so fresh, 
Were there any new technologies or techniques that you explored? Instead of having to make a computer-generated version of each of the kids to receive the lightning, because they're all covered in lightning, and kind of cheat, I feel, when you do that stuff, it's never quite like the real kid. We use this crazy lighting thing where you actually light the kids from four different angles at the same time, but we have a system where you can take that apart. And then you can use any given light. So when, when one of the kids goes and smashes a monster here, and it splats and you get lightning in the face, the, the light that's on the kid's face is really what it would have looked like if that happened, but we were able to choose later on. And Taika wanted us to try and find new technologies and push that stuff forward, and we're proud of that. So once you then have all of those different kinds of pieces of footage, how do you start to put it all together? It's actually a very creative process when you get to post with this because you, you effectively, when you're shooting, you have all these different lighting passes, but they're all, they're all conjoined. So we do what we call uh, dealing. You take them and you like, like a deck of cards, you deal them out, and now you've got four, six different layers of light. The light from here, the light from here, the light from there. Then it's a matter of going through an editorial. We start doing our, our what we call post viz when you start adding the monsters in, but you're using live action as opposed to previs. And you start building the scene and you start saying, well, you know, it'd be cool as if this one blows up like that, if that one blows up like this. Um, if we have a lightning strike from here, if Axel does a huge move here, smashes down, we should have the light from the foreground. And then you can start like blending like a chef where you basically go through and you start pulling the ingredients you need from lighting. You've already got the stuff because you've already shot it crazily enough, but you get to choose how much you blend in in post. I mean, again, technically never been done before, completely crazy, but from an artistic point of view, super satisfying. And then it's because it's real, you're actually working with these kids, not computer generated versions of them. Seeing the whole thing come together is, is pretty gratifying. It's cool. It most certainly is. Oh, so Jake, now looking back at this entire experience, you've gotten to work on all four of Marvel Studios Thor films. What do you love the most about these stories and these characters? The, the interesting thing about Thor as a character and from a visual effects point of view is it can be anything. It's not a grounded character. Like the, there's no character in the Marvel Universe that epitomizes space opera like Thor. Like he can be anywhere, he can do anything. He's got magic, he's got science. From a visual point of view, you get to tell any story you like and that's the attraction. Well, you make it look fun and you make it look incredible. Thank you so much for talking with us, Jake. And of course, everyone go experience Marvel Studios Thor Love and Thunder in theaters now.